Hello YouTube. I started working on the Bedford. Um, I glued the frame together and uh, some of the cab. So I want you to take a look. There are a lot of detailed parts that had to be glued together. And it is really amazing how detailed this is. And this actually, this will fit. It kind of slides in there, which, of course, since I'm trying to do this on video, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work for me right now. But anyways, that slides in there. But I want to do some detail work in here first before. I put that together. Lots of pieces to that engine. Now I'm gonna have to do some glue in there. I have to get that out of there. And the seams, I'm not too worried about these seams. I'm gonna cover that up up here it was these ones I was worried about those ones are pretty good like I said I'm gonna sand some of them down and cover that up with some rust or some steel but anyways I wanted to uh, kind of show you what I do to give it that weathered look I take Vallejo gray green a little bit of that and then I just start dabbing that here and there now let me see if I can hold this up and get it on camera so you can see and just little dots It doesn't have to be perfect. We're not going for anything perfect, that's for sure. Especially around what looks like bolts and whatnot. Those are good areas. Around the corners. Anywhere where there would be metal, hitting metal. And this can actually fold down, so it kind of makes it marks right in there. But this is pretty much what I do at first. I don't want a whole lot of wear on this. Just some. Let's get a little bit on this here. Now, the doors aren't on that yet. Like the hinge parts. Those would be some good areas for it. Where the door actually is going to shut. Especially where someone's stepping to get up in. That's good areas. The handles that they grab, another great area where the paint's gonna come off eventually. And then mind you, these are out in the desert too. Sandstorms, whatever you name it. Lots of wear and tear on these vehicles. kind of get the point of what we're going for here. Bring that out a little bit closer. 
Now, mind you, that's going to be covered up with some dirt and some rust. So, you know, that's not going to be the final product. Now, this is the Tester's Model Paint Modern Desert Sand that I used. Model Master. That's what I used on that. That's the spray that I used. And then we're going to go ahead and use some light rust wash. And for this, I'll get a cruddier brush that I have instead of that one that I was just using. This isn't really a cruddy brush, but it's it's been around, it's beat up. But I'll just show you on this. So let's see. Maybe we'll put a dab there, a little bit there. Mind you, this is just a wash. So it's kind of light. I don't want a whole lot of rust on there. But I'll go ahead and do this and this with all these weathering effects. Then, after that's done, There it is. I'll throw some African dust or Africa dust effects on there. And that'll spray some of that dirt on there, make it nice and cruddy. But that's just something I wanted to show you. You know, that way you know. And you can, there's no certain way that you should do this. I mean, I'm sure other people have certain techniques, but if you've seen some of my videos, my dioramas, you see how they turn out. And they don't turn out too bad. So you can just do it this way. And like I said, that is going to lighten up anyways after I put dirt. You, you'll hardly, you're really seeing this right now. But once I spray that Africa dust effects on there, you won't even see half of that. And then I've got some engine crud that I'll use on that. Uh, our engine effects. There's also rust streaks that I'll use. And I've, I've put that on a lot of my models I've done. There's all kinds of different things to use right there. Usually when you do the rust streaks, I get the extreme thinner and cleaner to wipe away some of the access because you'll have a lot of rust that comes with that. And you'll probably want to spray some dull coat or something to cover that paint otherwise it'll take the paint right off now you can do the chipping effect on this if you want also you could spray you could actually take this and thin it down spray that first then throw some salt on there any kind of salt after or put you Put a little bit of water on there throw some salt on there and then spray that over top and then wipe the salt off there's all different there's different kinds of ways that i've done it but for this one since i want a light look on that this is the route that i'm taking this time 
because I don't want a whole lot of rust on it. I don't want it to look like it's been out there too long, but I want it to look like it's been out there long enough. So that is where we stand right now. This kit is pretty cool. Like I said, lots of lots of small pieces. Like, you know, that's a piece, that's a piece. There's like three pieces that you put this together to get that. I mean, it's, there's a, all these, that's a piece. Everything, there is, this whole thing is just nothing but parts. I think the only thing that came in full was the frame. Everything else is glued on. Lots of detail, lots of uh, things to work with here. I mean, you can go crazy with this if you really want to. Okay, well, that's what I wanted to show you. Just something real quick, you know, nothing that was gonna take too long. Just a little bit of wear and weather. Just enough to, so you can kind of see. And you can go like that too. See, that kind of gives it a good effect. Just kind of rub it. That's okay if you mess up, because trust me, if you look at weathered vehicles, it doesn't matter. There is no perfect weathered vehicle. You do it your way. You just gotta know when to quit. Sometimes I don't know when to quit. I keep weathering, and that's too much. So that's, that's the only problem. You just gotta know when to quit. course in here this is a good place in here to put some of this then even get some steel some oily steel and put in there where it's been rubbed all the way down to the steel maybe even some rust just depends on what you want to do I've done that a lot too like that there's there will be more to that that's the thing, when you get started, it, it looks like nothing. It looks like, oh man, that looks like hell. But uh, after you get going with it and putting other coats of other things on, then you start to see it come out and it starts to look good. figure the passenger's going to slide his foot around a lot more than the driver and wear and tear that up for lack of interest. Okay, well, that is all I'm going to do for right now. I'm going to show you and then I'll keep going with this and I'll come back with what I've got done. Okay, so everything is done. We got the light wash, the rust wash. We've got some of the gray green on there where it's exposed. Um, put some rust streaks on there and use some of the thinner to clean it up. Like I said, I want a light rust on it, very light. Just did the cab, that's all. There's still a lot of cleanup, but I also took Vallejo Black and made a wash and just put grime all over it, except for the grill. And that grill, I'll continue to put some more black on that, and then I'll take one of the... Uh, to me a kits with the uh you know like the dust it looks like these this is the wrong one but the weather master ones and put some uh steel on that make it look like it's been you know weathered so that is what i've got so far and there's still more weathering to go like i said i haven't even sprayed that sand effect on there yet and I could if I want to 
even go around where those rust spots are and even hit it with an airbrush too. Throw a little bit of rust on there. Or I could take some of the light rust that I have and throw that on there too. I've done that before. But like I said, I don't want it to look super rusty. Just a little rusty and pretty nasty. So that is what we've got so far and obviously there's a lot of work to do and I left this off on purpose so I could still get in there and do all the detail work that I need to do inside because obviously that's not going to be the end of that I also have to rub out that floor put some steel in there But that's going to have to dry for a while because it's still kind of wet from throwing some of that wash on there. But at least you get the idea. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm going to throw some khaki on the seats. You know, it's really hard trying to paint things on camera for me because uh, for years I've never painted while I'm on camera. I just sit there and just paint. Never have to worry about, you know, making sure anybody sees what I'm doing. They just see the after effects. So it's, it's weird. There's one seat, and then I'll throw some dust on that. I have some Vallejo dust that I'll probably put on that. Because it's very wet, and it'll kind of soak in in oddball places. Maybe even got a little bit on there. All right, there's one seat. And of course, this one's going to be a little bit difficult because I got the steering wheel in the way. So you just got to be careful when you go in there to get that one. There's no line that's showing you the steel from the the uh, the cushion. So I'm just kind of making an imaginary line there. Okay, and the seats are done. And I'll probably throw some wash on the seats, then throw some of that desert dust. It's not gonna be that stuff, it's gonna be the Vallejo kind. Uh, let's see, I think I do have some over there right now. And that is the desert dust. That's the Vallejo kind. You could spray that on there too instead of that, but that's the kind I use usually when I paint with a paintbrush. And then I usually spray that one 
but that's another kind you can use and that's what I'll use on that you know after that's done throw a little bit of black on all the knobs here That's fairly easy. Just get, don't go down too far. That's all. You can even put that right there. Actually, I kind of like that because it's throwing, showing some of that desert color. So I don't know how much more I really want to put on there. Kind of wetting that up. Yeah, well, if it if it does, it does. It doesn't matter. I was going to do that anyway, so. Kind of like that tan look in there. But I think that's going to cover it. That's all right because we were going to do that anyways. All right. And that engine, you know, that, that's the problem with this kit. It's got so much detail. But the way this diorama is going to be, which I'm not entirely sure the way I'm going to go with it, that cab is going to be covering that engine. I'll just show you how that goes on now. I mean, obviously, you can make it so that it's flipped up, but, you know, it's going to be covering. So it kind of sucks because you're not going to get to see that engine unless you have it flipped up and the way I'm gonna have this it's definitely not gonna be flipped up I am gonna do detail on it just because I can always just take it off but uh, it's not gonna be that way uh, on the diorama I know that for certain because um, I'm definitely gonna have this is definitely going to be kind of, you know, stuck in an area in the desert and they're trying to dig it out or get it out. I'm still toying with the notion of uh, building something to go with it to try to pull it out, whether that be a tank or maybe even a Jeep. Because I've seen pictures of Jeeps pulling trucks like these out of the sand on the Internet, which is really cool. If you can find those, check those out. And I mean, I've seen tanks, little Stuart tanks pulling these trucks out or other trucks that they used out. So I have either or I could do, I could do a Jeep or I could do a Stuart. Um, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. I may not even do that. I'm not sure yet. I haven't made up my mind. But this is definitely going to be stuck in the sand. See if that's dry yet. Eh, it's getting there. It's probably going to take a while. And then, even with that, uh, you know, that Tamiya weathering or weather master, um, it's it's nice to use those. You can just kind of hit the sides with that too. So that's something cool that you could do. Um, it beats trying to paint the stuff or dab the stuff or I mean like I don't know before I was using the rust wash and whatnot I was using chalk dust which does work but it's more of a pain because you got to kind of build up with it you know so 
it's better to, if you can uh, get some of this stuff, you're better off. It'll definitely make things easier. Um, take a look at this one more time. And kind of see, yeah, you see that run? That's good, because it just looks like dirt and grime got up there and it's run off in the rain and then stayed there. You want stuff like that. You're gonna find stuff like that on military vehicles that haven't been washed in a while because they're out in the field. So that's some of that fun extra stuff that you don't plan on and it just, it just works. So you go with it. I'll tell you what, this has been fun trying to get this to line up. That's the only problem that I've had with this truck so far is trying to get that piece to line up on there correctly. So see how it doesn't quite line up right? It's kind of a pain. I mean, you can get it there, but it, it's not easy. So that's what we have with the cab so far. And I've got a lot more work to do. Just wanted to kind of give you an update of what this is gonna look like, where we're going with this. Doesn't look like much now, but if you've seen some of my dioramas, they don't, you watch some of the early videos, they don't look like much until they're done. And that's the way it is whenever you're modeling. A lot of the things that you do, it's like, yeah, I don't know, that don't look right. But as you keep going and layering and putting more stuff on there, the better it looks, the more realistic it looks. And this isn't anywhere close to being done. Like I said, I didn't do anything on this today because I still have to sand that, these lines, before I do anything. So there's still work that I have to do on this. But, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you like, please subscribe. Um, if you haven't, thank a veteran. Thank them for their service. Um, trying to line all this stuff up so you can kind of get an idea of some of the things that I use in case you want to get some of the stuff yourself. Got all kinds of goodies. That's even the medium rust. I did I did slap a little bit of that on there, but that stuff's kind of hard. That's old. And uh, I definitely need some new. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's some of the products that I use to weather. And there's a lot more weathering. And even when I get this all together, I'm probably still going to see something that I want to weather a little bit more. And then, like I said... That rust is kind of standing out right now, maybe a little bit more than what it should. But when I spray that Africa dust effects on that, a lot of that's going to go away. So you're going to want that a little thicker and showing out a little bit more. That way, when you spray it, you're still going to see it through the dust effects. So that's why some of this stuff is a little bit heavier than what you would probably want it like even some of the the gray green showing through i really kind of put it on thick that way when i spray that you'll still see some of that show through so there's a reason for everything but thank you for watching and god bless